You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. US veterans and Indian Americans hold anti-Pakistan rally in Washington. Pakistan three times more dangerous to humanity than Syria, says Oxford Report. Pak anti-terrorism court indicts Hafiz Saeed under global pressure. And suicide blasts rock Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan. India and the United States, two of the largest democracies across the world, have seen the worst side of violence when it comes to facing the wrath of radical Islamic terrorism. Beat 9-11 bombings or 26-11 attack, Pakistan-sponsored terrorism has claimed numerous innocent lives and extracted maximum peace out of these two nations. In order to register their anger against the terror-sponsoring country Pakistan, various U.S. veterans and Indian Americans recently held a protest outside the Pakistan embassy in Washington, a report. Nine eleven attack on World Trade Center. Life lost two thousand nine hundred seventy seven. Twenty six eleven Mumbai terror attack. Life lost one hundred sixty six. पाकिस्तान If today Pakistan is in huge amount of financial trouble because of FATF, America wields the strongest of influence on the 37 countries that constitute FATF. America also has a very strong influence as far as the World Bank is concerned, and the Asian Development Bank and other financial institutions, who are now very reluctant to give any financial support to Pakistan. They also feel that it is because of India as well as America that Pakistan is virtually isolated across the globe. and is today friendless they are also of the firm conviction but for the efforts of america and india daud ibrahim hafiz said lakhvi and masood azhar would not have been part of international terrorists nor would their organization been so declared hence they feel that it is absolutely essential for them to target these two countries staging a protest against pakistan's reluctance in prosecuting terror leaders like hafiz said and masood azhar a group of us veterans joined members of kashmiri diaspora and other indian americans to protest outside the pakistani embassy in washington dc the demonstrators representing different communities and backgrounds gathered to voice their anguish and strong condemnation of pakistan's policy and practices of state sponsored terrorism they accused pakistan of backing all the terror attacks directed against neighboring india and afghanistan as well as some western countries most glaring fact 
that is right in front of everybody's face is that we talk about this war in Afghanistan, we look at it, we hear about it from time to time, they leak information almost. Pakistan is never mentioned, and of course they're pulling the strings for everything that's going on with the Taliban. Were there no Pakistan, there would be no Taliban. The protesters at the Pakistan embassy reiterated that Pakistan is a safe haven for terrorists. They described the country as a place where terrorists can organize, plan, raise funds, communicate, recruit, train, transit and operate in relative security. Pakistan's international image, thanks to the efforts of the Indian Americans as well as the Americans themselves, is down in the doldrums. Today, Pakistan stands totally isolated internationally. Nobody wants to have any financial or business relationship with with Pakistan. Pakistan's economy is sunk and is virtually worthless today. Thirdly, Pakistan's international standing even in the Muslim countries has taken a nosedive. Today, Pakistan has no friend either in GCC countries or OIC countries. When Article 370 and 35A were taken up in the United States, in UN General Assembly in, in New York, only two Muslim countries, Turkey and Malaysia supported Pakistan. There is 58 countries supported India, which clearly indicates that Pakistan no longer has even friends who are willing to stand by Pakistan, thanks to the efforts of the Indians and the Indo-Americans. Two congregational candidates from Virginia and American veterans who fought and worked in Afghanistan were also among those who participated in the rally. Pakistan, Pakistan. Pakistan is Demonstrators held placards and chanted slogans against Pakistan, demanding 26-11 Mumbai attack culprits to be brought to justice. Far too long we've seen state sponsored terrorism and the time is now to stop. The actions of different countries like Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, no more. The time is now, the time is to stop and to point attention where it deserves. From these countries that are not supporting American ideologies and American values. Voicing their concerns with India, the international community has been repeatedly asking Pakistan to take action against state sponsored terrorism. However, the architects of Mumbai attack like Hafi Said, Maulana Zakiur Rahman Lakhvi and Sufyan Zafar continue to receive Pakistan's military patronage. Pakistan has today been given the infamous title of terror state owing to the fact that it breeds and harbors some of the most dreaded terrorists that carry out attacks in the whole world. Recently, a report published by Oxford has criticized Pakistan and termed it three times more dangerous than Syria. Newsweek South Asia has a report. Known as the safe haven for terrorists, Pakistan has once again been exposed after an Oxford report termed it as three times riskier than Syria. The study was titled, Humanity at Risk, Global Terror Threats Indicant. The report states that in Pakistan, Afghan Taliban and the Lashkar-e Taiba pose the maximum threat to international security and the world could be in grave danger if they are not controlled properly by the Pakistani government. The report also places Pakistan on top of the countries with the highest number of terrorist bases and camps which provide training, weapons and other resources to the terror groups to spread mayhem in the world. Pakistan has been using terrorists for its strategic designs. Cross-border terrorism is being used to gain strategic depth in Afghanistan and in Kashmir. The terrorists are also being used to bleed India through thousand cuts to disrupt India's growing economy. Cross-border terrorism is being used in Iran as a Shia Shunni conflict. So as a policy, as a state policy, Pakistan has adopted terrorism. 
The Oxford report discusses in detail about the threat posed by Pakistan-sponsored terrorism across the world and it also mentions the rise in number of dangerous extremist groups originating and expanding its bases in Pakistan. The report also proves the fact that there are a significant number of terror groups in Afghanistan which operate with the support of Pakistan. Mentioning the rise of competitive extremism of all shades, the report talks about misuse of weapons of mass destruction and economic disruption that undermine human progress, something which is seen in Pakistan. Pakistan as a state encourages them. While other countries are fighting terrorism, Pakistan is promoting terrorism. Pakistan is the nursery of terrorists. Pakistan is a factory which not only produces terrorists, it trains them, even empowers them, gives them money, financially supports them, and then uses them to meet their strategic and national interests. Along with Oxford, Strategic Foresight Group a think tank that works on global issues had analyzed almost 200 groups actively involved in committing acts of terror in the past decade. During that period, the groups motivated by their own interpretation of jihadi ideology accounted for only a fourth of almost 200 groups around the world. Among these groups, Islamic State of Iraq and Syria ranked top on the list of deadliest terror groups in the world. But now, with swift rise and fall of ISIS, the Al-Qaeda remains the most resilient network. Al-Qaeda always has followed the pattern of elevating various terrorist groups and using them in various areas, various corners of the world to spread the influence of Al-Qaeda and their ideology like Al-Qaeda in South Asia, Al-Qaeda in Syria, Al-Qaeda in uh, uh, Africa. Like that there are so many, uh, you know, the offshoots of Al-Qaeda and Al-Qaeda central has basically been only an ideological fountainhead for them. So that is why the ISIS model, it came like a bubble, it has died on like a bubble, but Al-Qaeda continues to survive. The report also mentions that the infamous terror organization Al-Qaeda, which was responsible for the 9-11 terror attacks in New York, was born in Pakistan. It also mentions that the perpetrator and mastermind of the 9-11 attacks, Osama bin Laden, was given a safe haven in a huge compound in Abbottabad, a very close to the Pakistani military establishment. Pakistan has been using terrorist forces like Taliban, the Hassan, uh, uh, Akani network, Al Qaeda, and at times it has even supported ISIS elements in Afghanistan to fight against the indigenous Afghan forces. The report reaffirms that the jihadi thought process have proved to be most resilient in Pakistan and Afghanistan. Many extremist movements rose and collapsed, but the jihadi movement having survived in Pakistan and Afghanistan now firmly spreading to the Middle East and North and West Africa. Under immense international pressure, Pakistan Anti-Terrorism Court indicted Hafiz Saeed on terror financing charges this week. The move seems nothing but just an exercise to hoodwink the international community in order to attract funds from foreign financing institutions and countries allied with Pakistan, a report. An anti-terrorism court indicted Jamaat Dawa chief Hafiz Saeed on terror financing charges this week in Lahore. The move comes after global immense pressure on the country to bring terror leaders residing in the country to justice. 
case against Hafiz Saeed and others was fixed for framing of charges by counter-terrorism department in connection with terror financing in Lahore. But strangely, the dates of hearing kept getting extended until this week. This time also, the court has convicted him along with four of his associates. But ultimately, when it comes to uh, giving him the punishment, they will save him somehow. They have done it in the past, they are doing it now, and they might do it in the future also. This entire eyewash has been done on the pressure of the US and the other international agencies. Even though now US diplomat has said that do you have to take action, you have to convict him. But when it comes to actually conviction, he is again bailed out. Then he is put in house arrest. These are all the eyewash things which Pakistan tries to fool the world by getting the sanctions removed, getting out of the FATF sanctions and protecting their basic uh, ISI agenda. Under pressure from the international community, the Pakistani authorities launched investigations into matters of lashkar e taiba or LET, jamaat ud dawa or JUD, and its charity wing, Falai Insaniyat Foundation, or FIF, for their holding and use of trust to raise funds for terrorism financing. At least 56 seminaries and facilities being run by the JUD and FIF in southern Sindh province were also taken over by authorities in the same case. Consequently, Hafiz Said, the co-founder and chief of these terrorist groups, was arrested in connection with charges related to terror financing and has been detained at Court Lakhpa jail since then. In spite of these so-called measures by Pakistan's counter-terrorism department, there seems to be absolutely no curb being put on terror financing and terror activities taking place in the country. The full-fledged terrorism department in government of Pakistan, which is functioning, to protect these terror elements. There is no anti-terror policy as such. This policy is made only as and when it suits them just to fool the world. They take some action, they put him in house arrest, provide him all the facilities, but the diversion of funding, even the last elections, he was allowed to contest under a different name. He collected funding just out of the uh, Rawalpindi town. He is building a much bigger office there, which nobody is checking from where the funds are coming. He is religion. He is using religion as a tool to collect funds. So Pakistan is doing basically nothing uh, to arrest these uh, terrorists and stop the diversion of the funds, which are meant for actually development of the people in Pakistan, uh, but actually going to the terrorism. The Asia Pacific Group of FATF has already blacklisted Pakistan for unsatisfactory measures to curb terrorism operating on its soil. Besides, Global Terror Financing Watchdog FATF in October retained Pakistan on its grey list till February next year for its failure to take adequate action against money laundering and terror financing. Pakistan on ground has done nothing to stop this flow of funds through the terror, terrorism to terror agencies, to the terrorists who are residing and enjoying a good life in Pakistan. So, it, to only future we will see if the pressure is built up on Pakistan internationally and he is moved to the blacklist, then it will have a serious implication on Pakistan because Pakistan today is surviving on foreign funding only. If the funding stops, Pakistan has no option other than to stop the funding of these terror activities, um, activities. But as on today, Pakistan has done nothing and the grey list continues. There are reviews again and again and Pakistan is requesting reviews based on the some false evidences which he is getting time so far but I don't think in the long run they will be able to escape these sanctions. As long as Pakistan doesn't take significant steps to fight terrorism and proves that it is genuinely severing ties with Islamist militants, there are high chances of it getting blacklisted by the global body. If blacklisted, Pakistan can face financial consequences and economic setbacks at a time 
when its economy is already in crisis. Also, it will get difficult for the country to get any financial aid from International Monetary Fund, the World Bank and other international organizations, making its financial condition more precarious. Taliban's war against foreign forces in Afghanistan is becoming bloodier by each passing day. In a recent attack on the forces, the insurgent group launched a suicide bomb blast on Afghanistan's Bagram Air Base, where the U.S. president had landed just a few weeks back on his surprise arrival to Afghanistan. The attack on the main American base in north of the Afghan capital killed two people while leaving several injured, a report. Suicide blast in Afghanistan killed one person and injured more than 60 in an attack on the United States main military base of Bagram this week. The early morning assault began when an attacker detonated an explosive laden vehicle near Bagram military base in Parwan province, north of the capital Kabul. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the attack and Afghan officials said all the insurgents were killed. Outside the sprawling base, several homes along with a large mosque were destroyed in the attack. The twin attack comes as the United States last week resumed talks with the Taliban just a few days after US President Donald Trump's surprise visit to the country. Trump on his to Afghanistan for the Thanksgiving announced the resumption of peace talks between the US and the Taliban. Even though Trump said he believes the Taliban want a ceasefire, the recent attack on the US military base says otherwise. This is a clear indication that the Taliban insurgent group and the US are not on the same page as yet on controlling violence in the war-torn nation. The consequences of which are being faced by the innocent civilians of Afghanistan. Ma sar namaz farz budum, sunat khanda budum, mayi bam budum. Ke infajar shota mi kilki ne khana sar ma aftid. Bas pay ma yek vakh sel kadam tu nimi fami dum. Didim ke dami ma gota mau par taftid. Zay kadam ke khun mea azalashi mam. In a separate case. The House Armed Services Committee in Washington opened the door to potential hearings on lessons learned from the war in Afghanistan. The hearing was called following a Washington Post to report that Pentagon officials privately told a watchdog for years about their deep concerns about the U.S. war strategy in Afghanistan. The disclosure comes as U.S. President Donald Trump and the Pentagon look to draw down the number of forces in Afghanistan to focus more on battling Al-Qaeda and Islamic State. second question I have is regarding the bombshell Washington Post report on the Afghan papers. I imagine you read that. Uh, the bottom line is that top military officials and civilian officials have known that the Afghan war has been unwinnable and have been misleading the American public for 20 years. Your predecessor, Secretary Rumsfeld, is quoted there as saying, I have no visibility into who the bad guys are. Are you embarrassed by Secretary Rumsfeld's comments and the other people quoted? And do you believe they owe the American public an explanation and an apology? The United States went into Afghanistan in 2001 and ousted its Taliban leaders after they refused to hand over members of the Al-Qaeda militant group behind the September 11 attack on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. About 2,400 U.S. service members have been killed in the Afghan conflict and many thousands more wounded. In order to put an end to this indefinite bloodshed, Several rounds of peace talks have been held between the United States and the Taliban, but these talks have not yielded any positive result as yet. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. 
Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsc at anin.com. This is Surbhi Sharma signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.